Heavenly Father, please be with me this morning as I am honored to give the message. Be on my heart and with my lips so that the words I say may give glory to you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Isn't it a great morning to praise the Lord? All right. Now, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it a little bit differently, but we're going to respond with an amen. Now, there's a few reasons why people in church do amens. One, it actually means that's true. It's giving affirmation to what the speaker says, and it actually reaches out to God, and it gives him praise. I like it because I know that at least some of you are awake. So, isn't it a great day to be in church? Amen? Amen. Isn't it a great day, as they say in the South, to be churching? Amen? Amen? All right. So I'm up here today, and I was asked to speak on Labor Day weekend. And I always find Labor Day to be a very interesting holiday because it's a time that we honor how hard Americans work. And how do we honor how hard Americans work? We take the day off. So I was looking. Think about it. I was looking the other day at the WAN ads because I'm always looking for a job opportunity. And I saw, the first slide here, please. I saw this ad. Job opportunity. Unlimited openings for the position of ambassador for Jesus. No experience necessary. Well, first of all, I thought, what is an ambassador? Looking it up, an ambassador is a person that represents his or her homeland in a foreign land. So as an ambassador for Jesus, you get to represent the kingdom of God here on earth. Amen? Amen. There we go. Okay, so here we are on earth representing the kingdom of God. Now people go, geez, can Lutherans be ambassadors? Can they be? And the old term you hear is evangelist. I don't like to use the term evangelist because people kind of get scared when you, you evangelize. They think of somebody on screen saying, oh, you know, Love Jesus or go to hell. I never understand that one. But, but I like to use the term ambassador because it, it's a softer term. But the term evangelist actually came from the position a man held, sorry, a man held with armies in the ancient times. And if the battle was won, the person would ride off on the horse and go back to the home country or the homeland or his town and say, hey, I've got great news. We won our battle. Well, okay, we're Lutherans. I mean, this church is a little different, but a lot of times Lutherans don't talk about evangelism or ambassadorships. But if you look at the world now, 64% of all Christians say it's the responsibility of Christians to share the faith. If you look at the opposite end of that, that means 36% of Christians don't believe they have to share the faith. Another interesting fact is that of people that attend church, only 5% have ever brought someone to church with them. Now, if we flip-flop that to 25%, I guarantee you would see Mount of Olives opening up a building program because we wouldn't have enough room for everybody, right? Right. So let's look at slide two. Why are we, to, you know, I, I'm kind of, before we jump onto that, you go, know, well, Lutheran's evangelizing. You know that Luther, wanted the church not to be called Lutheran. He wanted it to be called the Evangelical Church. Do you know that some of the fastest growing churches in the world are, even, are, are evangelical churches in India, uh, in, in Madagascar, in Namibia? So if we look at slide number two, the Great Commission, who's called? It says here, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is called the Great Commission. And statistically, 50% of people that are Christians don't know that's called the Great Commission. And if you notice, Jesus isn't making a suggestion. 
He isn't making, ah, you might want to do this. He's commanding us to go out and reach all nations, to reach the world. But you get there and you go, okay, the world, Kim, my world, the world, how can I do that? That seems impossible. Well, we're talking about your world. And your world is much larger than you even think. You have your family, you have your friends, you have your school, you young people. Oh, you've got all kind of friends, the guys and girls that you watch the game with, people at dances. Your world is there. It's just out there to reach and touch it. Women, you have your women's friends. Guys, we have our guy friends. You have both type of friends. So how do we get the title as ambassador? If we go to the next slide, please. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, see? Everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. All that means is Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins, to make us proper with God. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, meaning that's the message we share about Jesus going to the cross, in Christ, he was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Hey, anybody can do this. And entrusting the message, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal for us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. I don't know about you, but how does it feel to be an ambassador for Jesus? Pretty good, huh? So, remember that that message is entrusted to us by God. And should we consider it a burden? Not really. But before I would go out for any job, pardon me, I'm going to have a little water. Now, people may wonder why I have a camouflage water bottle. First of all, it keeps things very cold. But the downside is I took this to the guard once and I set it down. I couldn't find it for three days. Okay, so should we apply for the job? Next slide, number four. Do you want the job as ambassador for Jesus? My first question before I go to any job, is there a need for my job? Everyone here, it's a tough world we got going on now. It's a mess. I saw something on the news today that said, in the District of Columbia, they no longer put Tide on the shelves of stores because people are stealing them so fast that they only last for about two hours. We also know that there is great sadness in the world. Suicide is at some of its highest levels in history. If you vote for the wrong person, people will diss you. The world is hurting. The unchurched are at record levels. 13% of the the nation only attend church regularly. That means 87% of the nation are unchurched. That means 288 million Americans are unchurched and 2.7 re million residents of Orange County are unchurched. So is there a market out there for a product? Absolutely. And we've talked about in this church before the epidemic of isolation. People are lonely. I read an article recently where a woman made a telephone call and dialed the wrong number. Somebody on the other end answered. And that phone conversation lasted for 45 minutes. And at the end of the conversation, the person that received the telephone call said, you know what? I'm a senior citizen, and I have not talked to a human voice in nine days. The happiness of that story is there was a relationship developed, and these two ladies are now sisters in Christ. Now, what is my boss like is another thing that I think about. Hey, God created love. God created the universe. God loves you, so no matter what you do, he loves you. You can never do anything wrong. He forgives you. According to the Bible, he not only forgives you, he pushes the bad memory that he might have of you out. It's gone. I don't know about you, 
But my bosses that I've had aren't like that. I also think that, um, what should I do? Should I, should I go to this job? Am I going to have resources and support? Well, remember that our church has ma- many, many programs. Churches have lots of programs. There's, there's, there's been a, a hundred million Bibles a year are published in America. Since the creation of the Gutenberg Bible, five to seven billion Bibles have been printed. There are literally thousands of Christian aids and books. There's wonderful podcasts, and there are just wonderful videos that you can see on it. But most of all, don't ever forget that God gives each and every believer the Holy Spirit. God actually reaches down and changes you and puts a little thing in your body, that mystical thing that goes in your body that equips you to be an ambassador for him. No, not just a regular ambassador, an ambassador for Jesus, not to just do an okay job, an opportunity to do a great job because he's there with you. He will help you say the right things and do the right things. Is that an amen? Amen. All right, now, I asked to look. I hate to admit it, but before I would take any job, I want to look at the compensation. I want to look at the compensation. Well, I will tell you that the compensation you get as an ambassador for Jesus is, is like nothing you've ever seen. You can see your friends, your family, people that you introduce Jesus to. You can see Jesus work in their lives. And I don't know a lot about heaven, but I believe that when I go to heaven, and everybody in this room that's a believer, you're going to be with me. Yeah, well, (laughs) we're going to be all in heaven together. And you know what? The person that you talk to a little bit about Jesus And then maybe they were talked to by someone else and someone else. When you go to heaven, you're going to see all these people. And you're going to know your connection. And you're going to see, wait, that dad told that child. That dad did this. They did that. And you're going to see this flower of people that learned about Jesus for your initial contact. Now, a friend of mine, Mark Shear, God bless him, he used to lead a group here at this church to, to teach us how to evangelize. And he used to say, it takes 17 times to be touched by people before somebody really gets an interest in Jesus. So, last thing. How do you be an ambassador for Jesus? First of all, and it's always kind of the fallback. I don't like to use that terminology lightly. It's not a bad term. In church, when you're going to church, if you ever have anybody put you on the spot, always answer prayer. I pray. You pray. And this is true. Pray all the time. Pray every day that you can be a good evangelist. And there's two types of prayers that I like to think of when it comes to ambassadors. One is a general prayer that I just ask God, God, just help me today. Help me to remember that it's my job. It's my, my honor to be out there and reach people for you. Just general Give it this day. Then I do specifics, and we should do specifics. Everybody knows somebody that needs Jesus. Who in here knows someone that needs Jesus right now? All right, there should be every hand up in this place. Come on, we put your hands up, make believer Baptist. Okay? Amen? Okay, everybody knows somebody. Pray for that person specifically. Pray when you get up in the morning that you're going to go to your job, that you can make a difference. When you go again for a cup of coffee, pray that you meet somebody there. All right, so to wrap all this together, we're going to say, but Kim, how do I do this? Most of the world's b- biblically illiterate. They don't know anything about Jesus. They're afraid of church. They're afraid of church. People don't want to. They don't know when to stand up, when to sit down. It's a scary experience for them. We're going to do it with the last slide being salt. S means start a conversation. And looking out in this room, I know plenty of you people can start conversations. Plenty can start conversations. It's not that hard. Say hello. Hey, what do you think of the ball game last night? Hey, Cubs fan, hot weather. Like this coffee? This is my favorite coffee. It's an easy thing to do. Now people are going to go, Kim, 
Kim, but I'm busy. I've got kids. You don't know how it is to have kids. When you have kids, you've got an immediate audience with their family and friends. Women, oh, I'm, I'm shy. Well, go to other women. Men, oh, I can't. Talk. Go to other men. Your audience is out there. You, you can start a conversation with anybody. And you know what? You're going to even run into people that, that already know Jesus, and it doesn't matter. There's rewards to that. My wife and I were sitting in a coffee shop one morning, and a lady walked by, and she had a sweatshirt on and said, in the morning, coffee. In the evening, wine. <laughs> and I said, hey, great sweatshirt. So she stopped, talked for a minute, and we just exchanged it. She was going home to see her children. She said, what are you guys doing today? I said, uh, we're just having a cup of coffee before we do some churching. I always like to use the term churching because it kind of puts people a little bit more at ease. And she said to us, I knew it, I knew it. I knew you guys were believers, and so am I. And we ended that conversation by her saying, I'm going to pray for you guys. And we said, we're going to pray for you too. Did we bring anybody over? No, she was already there. But thank you, Jesus, for that. So the next thing we want to do is ask questions. I don't believe that you're going to get there and you're going to... You, you, are you going to hell? You don't, be gentle with your questions. Ask about their lives. Remember, people love, people, oh yeah, oh yeah. I always remember when I was a kid back in grad school, a woman says to me, one of our secretaries in our office, oh, that's the one we used to call them secretaries, can't do that anymore. She said, Kim, are you a believer? I said, I've gone to church my whole life and know a lot about Jesus. She said, no, but are you really a believer? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And you know how I reacted on something like that? Boom. Right? Right? So you got to be gentle. And, and then you have to listen to their response. Because remember, people are hurting. People are hurting out there nowadays. We had a sermon here several years ago or months ago. And Pastor Ed said, everybody has something going on in their life. Everybody. And it's true. It's true. Everybody has something going on in their life. And you have to be attuned to that. Also, finally, T. Tell your story. Now, everybody's here in church for a reason. And I'm not talking about for Jesus. I'm talking, somehow we were exposed to the word or we were exposed to Jesus because somebody introduced us, right? You might have been little kids. Little, my Sunday school teachers made such an impact on me, such a great impact. Oh, I think about it, I thought, they did such a wonderful job Man, they were old, like at 40 when I was a little boy. I used to go, she's so old, she must be 40 years old, but she's still nice. <laughs> and by the way, you know, a lot of, people say, oh, I'm too old to do this, Kim. You know, when you have gray hair, it makes people think you're smarter than you really are. It's awesome. It's awesome. So tell your story. Tell how Jesus has affected you. Tell how Jesus has made a difference in your life. Tell how you've been through hard times and, and, and you don't know how you do it without Jesus. Tell them about your church because there's one thing you have to remember. You can tell people a lot of stuff, but, but certain things have to be experienced. If I were to tell you, like a friend of mine told me once, Kim, there is an ice cream out there called salted caramel chocolate. I went, really? Salt on ice cream? You got to try it. Oh, no, it's fantastic. All right. No, it's really fantastic. Try it. Oh, my heavens. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? All right. You got salted caramel chocolate ice cream. You can't beat that. But people have to come and experience what the love of Jesus is. When you hear the music today, do you know that if it weren't for Jesus and the way God created us, what we heard this morning, that song that made you want to tap your foot, that feeling, that chill that you got when you're going, I'm praising the Lord. You know, if you didn't have Jesus making us the way we are, that would be static like on a radio. Static. Static. <laughs> 
But look at what we have. So they have to come and experience it. And I find my best, best method is not to get there and talk about apologetics and talk about this and that and get into an argument because it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work for me. It might for you, but it doesn't. But I want to have more than someone, not that I'm diminishing it, that someone gets to hear about Jesus. I want them to start experiencing Jesus' love because you'll never understand the principles that we set forth in the Bible until you understand Jesus' love. Okay? So, I want to tell you something that, how you can approach it. We have a friend in our family that my parents and she were good friends. Her parents and my grandparents were friends in the old country known as Italy. So, my relationship with her family has been around for well over a hundred years. And my friend is now 103 years old. And she's this tiny, can't hear real well, can't see real well. But the last time we went to lunch with her, when we left the restaurant, she went up to each and every busboy, to each server that waited on our table, and the two girls that told us where we were going to sit, and she took their hand in hers, and she said, God bless you. This was a wonderful time. God bless you. And she walked out, and I overheard the two young girls saying, oh my gosh, she is so cute. I just want to hug her. You could feel her love. And my prayer is that I would be number 17, and Josie was number 16 on the hits. Now I'm gonna look out at all you guys today and I'm gonna make you a promise. And this is a Kim Kabuddy promise and I promise it will happen. You know we all have our jobs. Some of us go to the offices, some of us do artwork, some of us do electrical work, carpentry work, we do sales. And you know what? We can be really, really good at it. Really, really good at it. But when we leave that job or when we go to heaven, people aren't going to remember much about how good of an electrician you were or how good of a lawyer you were. They don't remember that stuff. But when you go to heaven, people remember you because you introduced them in some form or another about the love of Jesus. And they will share his love with you in the presence of God, and your reward will be enjoyed throughout all eternity. Amen? amen. Oh, that's a big amen. amen. Amen? Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, and Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the, the opportunity, not a job, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be ambassadors for Jesus. And like only you can do, thank you for giving us the opportunity to spread your love throughout the world and change hearts and minds. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.